Yesterday, Valhalla got its first big patch, I would say, big update. It's title update 1.0.4, and I've been playing it for a couple hours now. I didn't want to rush out a video yesterday. Also, it was Thanksgiving. If you celebrate that, hope you guys had a good one. But so far, I would say this update, I mean, it's great that it came out so quickly after launch. I think it's a bit of a mixed bag because some things listed don't seem to be fixed, which is interesting, but... At the same time, there's some really cool new features like the fate option and the skill tree and some stuff that's been ironed out like screen tearing. So we're just going to dive in in this video and I'm going to share everything that I think about this patch. I won't cover absolutely everything because there's just so many changes in here, like the patch notes are really, really long. So we'll just cover the highlights. But of course, if you haven't read them yourselves, patch notes are linked in the description below. I wanted to start with performance, and this is a big issue that I've had with Valhalla since I started the game, and specifically with screen tearing. So I started Valhalla before launch on Xbox One X, and then I switched over to Series X when that came out, and then... <laughs> Joe, what are you doing? I must still smell like turkey from Thanksgiving. But I have tested this patch on both Xbox Series X and PS5. But all of the gameplay you guys are seeing is captured on PlayStation 5. So before the patch, you'd see screen tearing in the open world just while you were riding around or running on the ground. It really didn't matter. It would crop up in some places, but not others. But especially in cities, I would notice it big time in cities, but also in cutscenes. Um, so this was actually a major issue that I was tweeting about. It did get a little better on next gen, but after this patch, it has improved big time across the board, especially in open world scenarios. It's not completely gone. I've noticed it in small places, but it's far less like disrupting my experience. I've noticed the difference from this patch. There's one area in particular where I've noticed a huge difference, and that is Jorvik. Now, typically big cities have performance issues in open world games. Uh, now it's very smooth, except for Coppergate Market. This is an area where you can see some very clear screen tearing going on on console. There's still some issues there, so I'm sure that Ubisoft is going to continue to iron this stuff out. I also tested this in cutscenes, and I'd like to see a little more progress here. There is still some minor performance issues in cutscenes in particular, not as much screen tearing, which is fantastic. Uh, but when it does happen, it still takes me out of the experience. So I, I like this, you know, during major story beats to not happen. Obviously, you want the game to be as smooth as possible. So again, I expect this stuff to continue to get better as we get more patches. The next big topic is UI improvements. And I actually mentioned some of this stuff in my five big changes video, stuff that I wanted to see changed in Valhalla. And I'm not saying like I'm not taking credit or anything. This is stuff that they had already planned and been working on for a while now. They now added a subtext for runes to distinguish between armor and weapon runes. So you see this in your inventory. When you're scrolling over runes, it'll tell you whether they are armor or weapon focused. But I like I appreciate the change. I, I will say it's just not super helpful in its current form. It's nice when you're looking in the bag, but I think that most people, when they're looking at their runes, you're slotting them in a weapon or a piece of armor. And the game already, you know, doesn't show armor runes when you're slotting weapon runes because you can't use those. You know, you have to use it for the specific piece. So instead, in the future, I would like to see specific categories within these runes. So, for example, I want a category for stealth focused runes. I want a category for more offensive runes, more defensive runes, some ranged runes, you know, some fire specific fire buildup or fire resistant, you know, poison buildup, poison resistant. Stuff like that. We also saw a change with vendors, which is something that I specifically noted once again. Uh, we now have more specific categories for cosmetic schemes. So these are organized between things you can buy for your settlement, settlement decorations, tattoos, you know, hair options, stuff like that. So it's not just kind of everything dumped into one category, which is great. The next step for me is I we really need to get previews for items. It doesn't really make sense to say I want to buy the exotic hair light brown, but not be able to see what that hair looks like. Uh, so I don't know how hard that is to add into the game after the fact, you know, with a patch. 
uh, if it e even is possible, but that would be awesome. The next big change is to the skill tree. Now, it's not what I mentioned before about the fogging and defogging, although I've noticed that's less of a problem, probably just because I'm power level 250 now, but they added an option to auto assign points from the center of the tree. So you have to scroll over the center option and there's, you know, you can hold down the button and that allows you to let the fate decide what your skill points are going to be. Now I expected this to be completely random, right? I'm leaving it up to the fate to decide, but it seems to do the same thing almost every single time. And I played around with it like I filled it halfway to get to certain skills that I want and then said, let the fates decide and then it filled in the rest. But it all kind of seems to do the same thing, which is it branches out from the middle and grabs almost every single skill node that there is before getting to the outer edge. I like the ability to do this when I really don't want to worry about skills. I mean, by the time I've unlocked all the skills, which you can do pretty early on, I mean, not early, but like 60 hours in. By that point, it's like you have all the skills and then does it really matter unless you're going for a very specific build or you're on, a, you know, Drengear difficulty. So I, I like not having to worry about skills and having this option. However, I was a little confused by the description of what this was and my expectation when I saw these notes was that I could go and pick a skill, say heavy dual wield, for example, and then instead of you know having the fate decide, I would choose that skill and then it would automatically route me like the most optimal route through the tree to get to that skill. That would be awesome. And another thing that would really add the icing on top of the cake would be some kind of filtering for skills because there's just so many nodes here to pick through. It's kind of overwhelming when you get to a high level. So. I'd like to be able to pick a specific skill category. Say if I want light attack damage and that's the one thing that I'm specializing in, I wanna be able to filter it and then highlight those specific skill nodes and then maybe have the tree auto route to those for me. I really like the general idea of this skill tree and I love how much flexibility it affords, but I think with some more quality of life improvements, it could be even better. So there are a lot of specific bug fixes listed in the patch notes. And like I said, I'm not gonna cover everything in this video, but I did have one specific location for a raid where my Yams Vikings were not helping me open a box. I'm sure if you played the game, you've run into this problem in one place or another. So I went back to that raid location that I couldn't finish and that was fixed. My guys helped me open the box. And so, yeah, a very specific issue was addressed for me. Judging from the comments on my videos, especially the, you know, big changes that we need video, there are still a lot of little bugs like this. And I'd love to know from you guys in the comments, is there something specific that did work for you or didn't work for you? Uh, this is very much a your mileage may vary situation because this game is so big and there's so much potential for little things to go wrong. Just a couple more details that I noticed and appreciated from this update. Experienced travelers now show up on the map, which is nice. And when you go up to them, you can actually choose what kind of information you want instead of just getting a random piece of information, which is really nice. It makes it more like the cartographer in the settlement. I also had issues with audio breaking, like my footsteps would just disappear once I entered or left a location. That seems to be fixed. I haven't run into that issue at all since I got the patch. And then offering altars on the map show the requirement. So if you need hare's feet, for example, it tells you how many more you need. So little quality of life things like this, they go a long way and they're gonna keep piling up as we get more patches. Now there are some things, like I said, that didn't seem to work and I'm sure there's more, but these are just the things that I wanted to call out that have affected me personally. Uh, first off is duplicate items. Uh, I still have those, specifically the Huntsman's Torso. For some reason, I've got two of them in my inventory and I only looted one. Now, I'm sure I'm part of that rare subsection of the community that has switched between platforms using Ubisoft Connect. So I don't know if that has factored into this at all. Like for example, on PS5, I don't have the collector's edition, but on Xbox I do. So maybe that's causing some issues, I'm not really sure. And then it's been said that there's some clipping issues that have been addressed and some problems with Eivor's cloak. And I don't know, like I, I haven't, I've played enough, I think, to realize if there was a noticeable improvement and there really isn't to me. Um, this stuff didn't improve at least to me enough to notice uh, and, and point out to you guys. So. I'm still seeing some clipping, like 
when I have my hood up and I'm on the horse, there's always some kind of clipping with the, the saddle on the back there. And then also there's always bags kind of poking out that are clipping through Eivor's cape. Now, this is very specific stuff, but I'm sure a lot of you are like me and you notice little things like this. I hope little things like this do improve over time. So guys, that's all I really have to share, a short video here, but it's nice to see some progress with Valhalla, see the game improving. Uh, I do think this is a good first patch, especially considering the number of devs that are probably working from home on this thing, uh, you know, through the holiday with Thanksgiving, like, you know, it's great to see the game improve and I'm going to hopefully see it improve further in the future. I'd love to know what you guys want to see in the next patch. I'm sure there's plenty of issues that people would like to share in the comments, but what do you want to see specifically addressed in the future? Let me know. Also, stay tuned for more Valhalla content. I know it's been a little slower than you might have expected from me. I promise I'm just making a ton of progress in the game. Uh, I'm really sucked in the story by this point and I want to give you guys a very well-rounded perspective on things, on, on opinions before I, you know, m you know, make some grand statement about what I think about this or that. Also, look out for an Immortals Phoenix Rising video. I'm not allowed to say how soon, but I will be sharing my thoughts on the game very soon. So if you haven't already, make sure you're subbed to the channel and turn on live notifications, hit that bell so you don't miss these new videos. Also, be sure to follow me on Twitter. I'm at JVOnYT and Instagram at JV.YT. And if you want to talk more Assassin's Creed Valhalla or Cyberpunk, that's right around the corner. Any games really you want to talk about, we have a community discord over at discord.gg slash JV on YT. Lots of great people in our community. Links for everything are in the description below. Big thanks to my YouTube members, my ultra fans, Grass, Dave, Deadwalker, Bill, Cam, Cullen, and Jacob. My super fans, Kamal, Casey, Tipsy Sergey, Dan, Karen, and Tarl K. Fans, Matthew, Spyro, JVO, John, Lil Man, Brock, Tia, Level 42, Ryan, Allura, Ryan, Moonman, and Joe. Supporters, Nos, Flame, Nightmare, Sung, Abishek, V Toxic, Taryn, Glenn, Elo Games, Undersittable, Adam, Blaze, Mr. Hollow, and Quickness for supporting the channel. If you want to support me further, click the join button below this video. In exchange for your support, you'll unlock custom badges and emotes to use in chat. Check the link in the description for more information. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll talk to you next time.